This is not the video I planned on making today. So back on October 12th, I bought two GPUs. You can see the boxes looming over here. Well, you've got the ARC A750, which is the one I was gonna test out today. And then you can see the RTX 4090 looming over it in the background. Right now I have the ARC A750 installed in here. And today I was planning on doing two things. One was shoot a quick video that would come out today, which was that, well, the ARC A750 actually came with a free copy of Modern Warfare 2. And I was going to basically basically just say, hey, this GPU came with that, let's do our first initial testing and, you know, run the game, test out all the various graphic settings in Modern Warfare 2 and give some initial impressions on the RK750. However, the simple process of just downloading the free game, installing the drivers and the graphics card in my PC, and just checking I have everything running, the settings working, and recording the gameplay while playing, all turned into a massive headache that I did not expect. And well, that's gonna be a bigger part of the video today. So instead of giving you guys just the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which I actually haven't even started up yet, we might do that in this video, I'm gonna give you guys a run through of my first impressions of the ARC A750. Here's how my morning's been. Okay, first let's talk about the Intel ARC software. So, by the way, why am I filming the screen instead of just screen capturing this? Well, I'm having massive problems with screen capturing. So here is the Intel Arc driver software. So first experience with this, great, it fires up, nothing seems too bad, whatever. Now it does make fun of me for not having any games, even though I have lots of games. So it says scanning for games, it looks like you don't have any games. Wow, sad, uh, frowny face. I'm so lonely, it's so cold. Anyway, I can probably add some games to my library here, but let's be clear, I have lots of games on my computer and I'm not doing anything weird to hide them. Anyway, you can kind of monitor the performance and I haven't played around with that too much yet. Uh, the main thing I wanted to do was double check that I had variable refresh rate enabled so that I don't have screen tearing in my games. So I played around with the settings. I eventually went to global settings and I found frame delivery and it says tearing mitigation mode. So we've got tearing mitigation modes, that seems fine. Um, and it gives us a, a description of a whole bunch of options here. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that none of these actually clearly just say variable refresh rate. There's application choice, uh, capped FPS, there's VSync ons, there's smooth sync which basically allows screen tearing but tries to smooth it out. Um, speed sync, which display the latest frame in sync with the display, no tearing artifacts will be visible. I think that's similar to Nvidia's fast sync. And there's smart vSync, which automatically toggles vSync on or off depending on the application's render rate. Interesting, none of those actually say variable refresh rate and I can't find anything under here which uh, allows that. So I have a couple of theories. My first theory about this problem was that, oh, well, I'm a, th this screen here is an LG TV. This is an LG C1 48 inch OLED gaming screen. Now it supports variable refresh rate. I can open up the menu here and I don't know if you guys can see it, but it says variable refresh rate and it has um, on or off here. Uh, right there. So that, and by the way, this isn't within Windows. This is the TV's actual like gaming menu thing here. And apparently it's, it's turned off right now, but that's because it's not sensing any kind of variable refresh rate signal from this. Uh, now this TV supports FreeSync Premium uh, and is G-Sync compatible. And I've never had any issues with that on an AMD or, a, or an Nvidia GPU. So now let's switch over to my other monitor because I was thinking that the issue is the fact that this is um, uh, connected via HDMI rather than um, via DisplayPort. So my other monitor, uh, I'll switch over to my second screen. Let's switch over there. Okay, we're now looking at my ultra wide monitor that is hooked up via DisplayPort. Now I don't like gaming on this because it honestly has terrible uh, ghosting issues. So anyway, that's, that's that. Uh, but the problem is even if I open up the menu over here, oh, by the way, it's not resized well. Okay, it finally figured out that it was on a, uh, um, that it, that it was on an ultra wide now. So the uh, overlay did adjust to the size. It just took it a second to think about it. 
Uh, now, let me see if I can move this. Uh, see, wouldn't it be nice if I could drag this window to be closer to where you guys could see it, right? Where, where the camera's filming? I can't click and drag that. In fact, uh, this whole menu window um, is like a full screen thing. So like my, my X out of this menu is way over here. And it has a few little like tool tips and stuff up there. So this whole thing's kind of weird. If I want to move this little window, I can't make it fill the whole screen. I can't do that. This is just kind of side note stuff. I think there is a setting somewhere in here where I could, yeah, I, I think I can adjust where it puts the window so we can at least move it to the center if we wanted to. Um, anyway, so this is a whole other thing, but the point is that even now, if I go into the, um, if I go into the, uh, let's see, we were in preferences, uh, I was going to global game settings, frame delivery, I still don't see any option for any kind of uh, variable refresh rate. I see VSync on, smooth sync, and smart sync as the only things that I can actually click on. Now, I did try restarting the computer with only this monitor uh, turned on to see if that was somehow faking it out or some kind of a problem. So it doesn't seem like I can turn on variable refresh rate on either of these screens. Um, both of them are free sync with G sync compatibility, so. You know, it seems like they should support whatever Intel's version of that is, but they don't seem to. Um, and I thought the issue might be the HDMI 2.1 on my uh, on my TV over there, but this one's connected via DisplayPort, so I don't think that's the problem, and I have not found a solution to this problem. So now let's talk about what if I wanted to run a game. Uh, let's run it at the native resolution and let's go to medium settings. By the way, remember the cyberpunk bug of uh, make sure you do something that actually triggers the apply button so that you actually apply your settings. Otherwise, cyberpunk is a buggy mess. And let's say I wanted to run this benchmark, but let's say I wanted to record it while I was talking. So anyway, Intel does have a hotkey, Alt-I, to bring up their in-game overlay. Good. But here's the thing, guys. I, I'm moving my mouse. I cannot interact with this screen on, do you see that mouse there? It's like jiggling slightly, right? Like, look, I am trying to move the mouse right now. Nothing is happening. It doesn't work. I can't actually interact with the in-game overlay while the game is going. You can pull it up with Alt-I, and you can put it away with Alt-I, but I can't actually interact with this to try to record the game. Now, if I, if I let's see, Alt-I, get out of that, and then put my, uh, you know, uh, desktop back over here. So now I can try to uh, open up the, the art control panel. I can actually interact with it now when I'm on the desktop, but I couldn't when the game was actually open. Now, the reason why that's important is usually when I shoot a quick recording of, of a GPU, and even when I do recordings of like head-to-head, -head, things like that, I usually record them with their built-in GPU encoders in their driver software. And that's what I was trying to do here. So if I go to capture, first of all, I, I, you know, I, I saw the difference between broadcast and capture, so I'm assuming capture is what I should be using here because I'm not trying to live stream. And if I want to start the recording right now, okay, good, I can now, but that's because I've already changed some of the settings. So let's go to the advanced settings here. So first of all, I was originally trying to record um, at 4K resolution on my big screen, um, but right now we're set to 1440p. I wanted to try out the new AV1 encoder, so we're on the AV1 encoder at 60 FPS. Great, so let's start capturing. It's not starting. Why is it not starting? Well, okay, if we look over here, if you can see it, it's getting, giving me the warning that FPS, let me click it again to make sure that starts back up. FPS of 60 is not supported above 1080p. So I can't capture 60 FPS gameplay above 1080p. I could go down to 30 frames per second, and now it can capture at 1440p. I cannot capture at 60 FPS using the driver software on this GPU, at least with the AV1 encoder. Let's go down to AVC. Does, it, does AVC work? Nope. Uh, HEVC? Nope. So it looks like the driver software is just not capable of capturing at 60 frames per second at anything above 1080p. Now, I haven't tested this out with um, 
uh, you know, with OBS yet, so I might need to use some other software. But I found on my Intel, uh, sorry, on my uh, AMD and NVIDIA GPUs that to have the smallest performance impact when capturing gameplay using the GPU's own driver software usually gives me a 0 to 2% performance hit, which is kind of negligible. And if you're comparing two GPUs head to head and they both take that 1 to 2% performance hit, right, it's pretty pretty equalized. Uh, but this won't take that. Like, it, it's not going to do that. So I can't record 60 FPS gameplay if I want to do it um, at anything above 1080p. That's just, it just isn't supported. So we have to be at 30 FPS, 1080, sorry, 1080p to get 60 FPS, which is incredibly frustrating. The other issue I'm running into is here. So my microphone setup is um, maybe not exactly typical. L let me let me show you guys. So over here, ignore the shaky camera. Um, over here is my audio interface. You can see my audio interface has my microphone going into one of two possible inputs. Now, what's annoying with that setup in s is that a lot of um, microphone inputs will read this as a stereo mic input, and so the audio will only go through um, one speaker channel. And for example, uh, what, what I tend to do then, so in other words, when I use this analog one plus two on my uh, audio input here, I'm gonna get it coming through one speaker channel. But what I could do on AMD and NVIDIA's driver software is I can tell it to capture the game audio on a separate track from the stereo microphone. And then in, in my editing software, I can then take that microphone and switch it back to mono. I can't, it doesn't seem to give me any option to capture a separate microphone track in the NVIDIA, uh, sorry, in the Intel software here, whereas I can capture a separate microphone track on AMD and NVIDIA's built-in software. So, in other words, I was excited about the potential of Intel Arc GPUs as, you know, being really good for game capture and encoding. And I was even excited to try out using the AV1 uh, encoder right through the driver software and see what good quality we got, what file sizes we got. Um, but it looks like if I'm gonna be doing that, I'm gonna have to find some other software to, that hopefully works better. It doesn't look like the driver software is going to do it for me. So that has been my day one initial experience with all of this is basically I can't get variable refresh rate to show up anywhere. Um, if you guys know how, let me know in the comment section, but in, I, I mean, it seems like it should be under tearing mitigation methods, right? Isn't that where it should be? Well, apparently it isn't, or at least it's not compatible with either of my two displays, which I've never had any issue before. And like I said, I, it makes fun of me for not owning any video games. <laughs> it's this weird thing where it's like kind of a full screen app, but it isn't. And then we have all sorts of issues with the uh, with the studio thing and disappointing recordings. But let's actually try doing what my initial plan was today, which is how about we fire up Modern Warfare 2 and get that downloaded and installed. Except that was a huge headache too. Yes, I actually wear glasses, guys. They usually have lighting recording, like the, the lighting reflects off my glasses. I don't usually wear them in my videos. Anyway, um, so let's talk now about my, the experience I had trying to get the Intel, um, trying to get the free Modern Warfare 2 to download. Now, this is a whole other issue than Intel's graphics, right? And the graphics card and the graphics software but it just added to my negative day one experience. So if somebody bought this GPU specifically because they would have already spent $70 on Modern Warfare 2, making that, that that was a big part of the value of buying this, then when you went to the um, Intel uh, website to download the thing on day one of Modern Warfare 2 launch, first of all, if you tried to go early, which, which a lot of people did, um, you could sign up for their program, but they said the codes weren't available yet. Now, when you then, uh, they said to come back later. So when you come back on the day the game actually comes out, then you, um, and you try to download it, th their website was too full of traffic and the servers were crashing. I tried all day yesterday to download this thing and it wouldn't work. Now, fair enough, today it's working. This is Saturday morning. I'll probably put this video out today, but who knows. But anyway, uh, this is the day after the game launched. So anybody who wanted to download the game on day one, they could have tried ahead of time and it didn't work. 
Um, and then they tr you try on the actual launch day, and the servers are down. I, uh, it seemed like all day long. I tried several times throughout the day, and I could not get it to work. This morning, it did work. So that was my experience trying to in install and use the driver software. Um, that was my experience trying to, you know, then I had a nightmare trying to actually get my free game. Now we've actually got the free game, so let's end this video with actually running the game and seeing if it works. Oh, another little side note that's popping up. I usually use MSI Afterburner to get all those little performance numbers in the corner of the screen. Sometimes I get comments, people asking, they're not sure what, what I use. Anyway, usually MSI Afterburner. By the way, I'm just pointing out that it does it detects that I have an Intel Arc A750 graphics card here, but nothing really shows up about the stats, so it looks like these are not fully supported in here. And it also li somewhat limits the stats we'll get about the GPU. Um, while we're actually running it to test out the game. Now, Intel does have its own uh, performance monitor. Uh, so if I press uh, Alt-O, there's this overlay up here that pops up. So we might need to use that if we need to, but it's the text is really small, so it wouldn't show up well in this video. So I'm hoping we don't have to use that. Uh, the other thing that just popped up uh, that I was thinking about is, okay, so when I was having these issues with this control panel, and I wanted to take a screenshot of it, usually I would press uh, you know, Windows Shift S to get my snapping tool to screenshot whatever I want. I use that all the time in basically every program. I press Windows Shift S with this and, and nothing pops up. I can't screenshot this the way I, I normally do. So something annoying like you know, Windows Shift S now, um, Wait, it's actually not working on desktop either. So apparently like Windows Shift S, oh, there it goes. Now it's actually working. So usually that gives me a draggable window that I can now screenshot things and they pop up and I can use them. That wasn't working um, when I'm in my Intel control panel for some reason. I don't know why, so it makes it harder to screenshot the issues that I was having. Anyway, let's now actually fire up the game. All right, guys, I do have MSI Afterburner monitoring the stats. It looks like it will give us the GPU usage, but not like it's fan speeds or any of that. Um, and we are getting the frame rate counter going. I have no idea. Uh, I'm going to be an assault loadout because I don't play Call of Duty. I play shooter games, but not Call of Duty specifically, so we, we shall see. Now, once again, just to confirm, my monitor is reporting that variable refresh mode is off, and I have not figured out a, a solution to that problem. Um, okay, the graphic settings I set to just kind of some sort of default, and they look horrible. So let's see where we are at right now. So we're at 1080p, and the quality is set to recommended. Let's reset to recommended again, um, and see if it, if it makes better choices. Please make good choices, computer. Okay, this looks less bad, I think. Um, my, ma Ooh, my mouse sensitivity is way too high, but hey, this is more about the performance of the GPU and less about me. So we are over 100 frames per second. So why don't we actually go ahead and adjust the graphic settings real quick? Let's go, uh, well, let's, let's stay at 1080p, but why don't we actually start out at extreme settings 1080p? So basically, we are maxing the game out. Ooh, looks like this game does have XCSS support. I don't, uh, I don't know if that's on right now. Let's turn it off to be sure. And okay, it, the game crashed. All right, we've got the game fired back up. We're loading back into another match. I do have the game set to 1080p, the quality. It's reading out as recommended, but I clicked apply on extreme. So hopefully that's on and maybe just extreme is recommended. I don't know, but it does look like I got the upscaling turned off this time. So hopefully that crash wasn't a sign of, you know, th things to come. <laughs> hopefully that was just that I was changing a whole bunch of graphic settings really fast. And um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So loading into another game. This is, like I said, uh, I think I loaded up Ground War. I don't know anything about Call of Duty or what Ground War is, but it seemed to be a thing. And we're now loading in and we are now below 50, 60 FPS significantly. We're looking like we're at maximum GPU utilization. Um, you know what, let's go ahead and also turn on Intel's stats over here. I just don't know if you guys can see them. Now I can definitely tell I don't have variable refresh rate activated. Like I can feel the difference even with the, especially at lower frame rates when I'm below 60 FPS, I would love to have variable refresh rate support but it looks like that's not the case. 
So hopefully between these two big stats panels, we can get some idea of what's going on. And uh, I will attempt to actually play the game a little bit. We're already below 60 FPS though, so I'll probably be dropping settings pretty soon. Remember, this is the game that this GPU bundled with, so I'm giving Intel the, <laughs> the benefit of the doubt. Here, I'm in a tank now. What, what, what do I do? Um, apparently my tank driver was leaving the combat area. So we're going to assume that tank driver has no idea what they're doing. And get out of the tank. <laughs> Alright. So what is this game mode? Are they like control points? Is that is that what this is? So do I need to head out to some control points? Is this basically Battlefield? Is Ground War just like, hey, they noticed Battlefield isn't doing well, so let's make a Battlefield game? Um... I don't know. I guess I guess we'll see. Now it looks like we are capturing this control point. Okay, the frame rate is so bad and we're not even in combat. I think what we're going to do is adjust some graphics settings. So let's go to the graphics settings. Okay, it says we're in windowed mode now and originally I was in full screen, but we're going to just not even mess with that. Let's go down to the ultra settings. Apply. Hopefully the game doesn't crash. The uh, It looks like Guys, I swear the, the resolution just changed. I swear the resolution just changed. I know it still says 1080p, but I think the resolution just changed. I don't know whether that's a bug on the game or whether that's a bug on, um, on Intel's end, but this is not 1080p. I can tell you right now, this is not 1080p. So perhaps that is part of the problem of what's going on right now. But again, is the issue the game? I mean, I have it set to 1080p. Let's try changing it to 1440p. Apply settings. And nothing seemed to change, which means I think it was actually at 1440p. Now I don't know why. Let's go to 1920 by 1080. Apply settings. Actually, nothing seems to be happening. Basically, it doesn't look like I can change, uh, I can change the resolution. Now, I haven't tested out the full release version of this game on... Now we're on full screen borderless. Can I go... Uh, there's no full screen, just like exclusive full screen. Full screen extended... Can we just go to windowed mode? Does that help? <laughs> um, now I can't even control my resolution. Or, wait, I can? Full screen borderless? 1080p, apply settings? I don't know, guys. I don't even know what resolution I'm at. This is just kind of a disappointing start here. Again, I can usually tell by the size that the uh, stats render at what resolution I'm at, and this kind of feels like I'm at my, my monitor's 4K resolution. Should I try restarting the whole PC off camera, coming back in and seeing if things work out a little bit better? Let's try that, guys. Let's restart the PC and give it one more chance. Okay, I've restarted the PC, that didn't solve the problem, but I think I've actually figured out the issue, guys. So check this out. I can, I can actually do full screen exclusive now, which does let me set 1080p and it renders correctly on the screen. Now, when I press Alt-O to put on Intel's overlay, this is what's breaking the game. So now, when I go into the graphics settings, notice that I'm in windowed mode and full screen exclusive no longer exists. Now watch me turn off the Intel overlay. Sorry, that's the wrong one. Intel overlay is off. So Intel overlay is off. Now full screen exclusive is available. So it's actually Intel's own overlay, right? That's on. I can't, I can't go to full screen exclusive anymore. So basically, I think we can test this out. I just can't use Intel's own, um, uh, own menu stuff because that's what's breaking the game. So let's quick play into a game. I don't even know what game mode we're gonna get, but it looks like we can't use Intel's thing because that breaks running my monitor at a resolution other than its native resolution. My guess is it has something to do with the annoying way that Intel Art Control Panel works. Because remember how I showed you guys that like, 
Um, it wasn't working well. Like I couldn't click around in that overlay menu very well when it's in a game. It had all sorts of other issues. It operates like it's a full screen application, even when it's kind of not, it's only taking up part of your screen. So I think that's the problem. So we'll just leave it on MSI Afterburner um, rather than <laughs> Intel's own thing. And now we can at least actually get to play the game at the resolution that we're selecting. Apparently I'm in some sort of a team deathmatch. And apparently my mouse, mouse sensitivity is still too high. But at least our frame rates now actually make sense, right? We're, we're over 100 FPS, dropping into the 80s, 90s, but things actually feel pretty, pretty okay now. And I got a kill. That's a teammate. That's not a teammate. I can definitely tell we are not on variable refresh rate though. This feels way more sluggish than it should um, because I'm not in variable refresh rate. So that is still broken. So at least we have that going for us. Anyway, so now that we see we can run the game at 100 frames per second, let's see what settings we're actually running at. It, it says recommended, whatever that is. Let's try clicking on ultra, apply settings, and then see if it actually applies. Um, it looks like it did, but when I go back into the menu, let's see if it really applied. Oh no, they killed me. Now it says recommended again, guys. So I have no idea if, if this actually applied the, the ultra settings or not. So we may or may not be at, at, at ultra settings. We're definitely at 1080p. Um, yeah, guys, I can just, this feels so bad when you're used to variable refresh rate at these, at these frame rates. Like the, the latency feels noticeably bad compared to what I'm used to when playing games. So we're definitely gonna blame that for why I'm dying. So anyway, let's go ahead and go up to 1440p since I think we actually can do that now. Right, see that actually sized down, right? The monitor is now taking the brunt of the upscale and the game is rendering at um, 1440p. And our performance still looks pretty good. And my performance doesn't, but that's uh, that's because I'm staring at the frame rate counter. So quality settings, again, it says where it recommended. By the way, if you want to see what that is, apparently it's this. Um, so there's a lot of individual settings here, guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and try turning on XCSS. Hopefully that doesn't crash the game. So XCSS, um, let's go to, um, yeah, let, let's try performance mode. Did our frame rate actually improve? Was it already running XCSS performance mode without telling me? Difficult to say. <laughs> I mean, the menu specifically said XCSS had been off. So either XCSS isn't working or it doesn't seem to be boosting performance very much. Look, it says off. So XCSS, apply settings. It acts like it's applying settings. It acts like it's in performance mode. L let's try quality mode. Apply settings. So it seems like this should be applying XCSS, but kind of isn't. I don't know, guys. I wanted to show you a cool, uh, you know, <laughs> a cool test here, but we couldn't screen capture it. And now we're having trouble um, just adjusting settings in the game. So at least we have that going for us. <laughs> um, let's, well, we can at least go up to 4K because we can actually adjust resolution now, it seems like. And now we're back down into the, you know, 40 to 50 FPS range. So this is what I think the game had actually been running at initially. Um, on our other testing, I think it really had been at 4K. Again, it says upscaling is off. Uh, can we try FSR? Does FSR work? So FSR performance mode. Okay, FSR seems to apply with no issues. Unfortunately, it's FSR 1.0 instead of 2.0. But look, like it's not like the game menu is just broken. XCSS wouldn't apply, but FSR 1.0 will apply. 
By the way, I do have the latest graphics drivers and whatnot. I have the, so anyway, that's not the problem. So guys, <laughs> I've got to say, I mean, we're playing the game. It is, uh, it is working. We had that one initial crash. The overlay is clearly seems to be broken, or at least kind of break the game when I try to use it, at least from running in, in full screen mode. Anyway, guys, I, I was gonna do more extensive testing of this game, but I think, I think we're gonna call it here and say that today was more of a bug testing video. And we will um, probably revisit this GPU for further testing. I'll probably, I guess, need to find some other way of screen capturing it. Maybe I'll have to set up a second PC and do a capture card or something like that. Um, or we could test out um, what kind of performance impact using OBS or something like that has. Anyway, I think that's enough for today. I hope all of you have an excellent day.